Hi everyone, it's Karen here for Artist Live, and I'm here today to create a steampunk project. These are two mini 4x4 canvases that look like boxes, and I've just altered them to create a steampunk, steampunk look. Um, I'm just going to turn the camera around so you can see the project. These are the two boxes. As you can see, I've posted them on the on my Facebook page, so you, I'm sure you've seen them over there. Just need to well center them this way. Okay, there we go. So there's two different boxes, and I'm gonna show you how I altered them. I did go ahead and do a little bit of gluing in advance. I did. I'll show you what I did. I found these thanks to some nice online friends. I went to Michael's and all these uh, canvases were on like 80% off at Michael's. I think it was uh, Robbie or Miranda that told us about them. And um, it was just, uh, I had to go get and I bought these are really cute. And what I did is I glued already the relics and artifacts, um, resin pieces to that, to it just because it takes so long to dry and I really wanted to show you how I alter it. I mean these are the chivalry um, wings and flame and I and I glue them on top of a um, bottle cap. I'll show you which bottle cap. These are the vintage trinkets from Prima from Finnebear. These are the bottle caps and uh, I just glued it at the top just so you see what I did. In this original one I use the other type of bottle caps, but I run out of those. So I am um, only have the big one to use here, but I don't have the medium sized one. So I use these bottle caps instead, but the, the technique is gonna be the same. And I have two of these already glued and ready to go. Okay, so I'm just going to move these to the side, bring the new ones here. So these are basically the two that I'm doing, I'm going to maybe prop these up here. All right. So you can see they're glued. I've already been, they've already been glued for a few days. Um, it usually needs about 24 hours. And the original one I did alter at first, altered the wings, and then I went and glued them, but I had, they had to sit for a long time. So I did do it differently this time. Um, I'm going to be using um, some seven dot stood seven dot studio products and i'm also going to be using um some prima products finnevere prima products so um, first i'm going to start with the stencil this is a seven dot studio stencil it's called um oh sharika remind me the name of this one um oh goodness i can't remember the name it looks like a corn cup but it's that's not the name of it um it looks like corn husks to me but that's not the name so she will put them up uh, tick marks, you know, I don't know. I want to say that, but I'm not 100% sure. And then I'm going to get, we have, this is, I love this this product from Prima, the Finna Bears Extrava, Ex, Art Extravagance Rust Paste, and it comes in the brown, the, the rust color, and the gold color. And I'm going to create some texture with the, with the brown, with the dark color. And then I will apply terracotta and other ones there too. Um, I'm just getting a spatula. Uh, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to create a little bit of texture using uh, using this. So very grainy. I sometimes have to use my finger for it because it doesn't allow me to get through this thick stencil. And I'm not adding a lot of um, texture, just a little bit. Just to kind of, because you, you probably won't see most of it. Um, it will be hidden by all the other embellishments. So just a little bit, just to show it here and there. Here's the other one. And 
Oh, tick marks. That's what the stencil is called. It's a uh, Seven Dot Studio uh, Homegrown Collection Tick Marks. Just for those of you who may be still wondering. Um, I'm also going to add some texture here. And because obviously I have this over there, I'm going to have to hold it on my in on in the air. This is why I didn't. I originally I didn't have this glued on top, right? So it made a difference, but I can still manage just a little bit. Like I said, a little bit of texture all around, because you might not notice it in the in the front, but you will definitely notice these tick marks and and on the sides of the. Um, of the edges of the stents of the canvas. Okay, so there's that. Let me turn this around to put the other side. And there we go. Mm -hmm. Let's, I'm just I'm going around the wings, which is not the easiest. There we go, and just a little bit here. Sometimes I find my fingers much easier to use with my finger. And last but not least, the front, which I'm gonna smush here, but oh well. And I don't want a lot, I just want a little bit of, of just texture and that's it. I'm gonna let this dry. Let's go with the other one. And maybe do the top first. I mean, this texture is really good. It's really fun. I really love using it. Um, oops, it does make a little bit of a mess when I'm not holding it properly. Okay, and this way and this way. And the last side, oh no, not the last side. Forgot about this bottom part. Okay. Let me go here and here. There we go, oops. This is just moving too much. I can't get it to go straight without moving it. Maybe I'll go like this. Last side, last side. You guys see? Maybe I'll do the back. Okay. Okay, there we go. Not the most convenient way of doing it, but it's better than nothing. Okay, the last thing is because it's a very thick paste, it dries quickly, so we're good. I'm just gonna clean my hands. And, oh, hi, Irene. Are you Irene Siegel? So nice that you came. Okay. Okay. There we go. Just a little bit of just cleaning this up. As usually you know me, I don't have my, I didn't put a bucket or anything there, but you know that I don't particularly like doing that. Okay. Um, Okay, there we go. Put this aside. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get back to the paste in a second. First, I want to just do. I would just want to put my. Um, I want to put all the metals and glue everything together, and I want to use a heavy gel, which is all the way over here. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, I had to go get the heavy gel. It wasn't in another area. Okay, so the first thing, a few things that I did, I'm gonna copy these more or less the same. As you can see, I was using the heavy gel with this. Um, let's move what I don't need. So, two pieces of the Amwow Studio uh, from the Homegrown and um, Fortune Teller collections from Seven Dot Studios. Uh, so. One of them is goes here, 
and the other one is basically oh this way oh and I'm covering everything here you see okay so I'm gonna glue these I'm gonna go step by step on what I added to this so it's just basically layering the different products I mean it's not really hard there we go and the other one um, I apologize I don't I'm, I can't see the chat and I also don't want to interact not that I don't want to interact with you guys but I want to keep it as as simple as possible so people don't get upset with me when they're reading the chat when they're seeing this video after in the recording so I just explained the steps and that's all I'm gonna do um, I have used this metal embellishment it's an ornament metal from Prima isn't it nice? Um, this product number is from Prima 583552. And it comes, look at the nice ornaments. But this one is one of the ornaments that, uh, ornam or not ornamental metals. Uh -huh. Stuck very well. Okay. And I glued this on, one on top. And I, I like, I mean, I, you don't have to use your fingers. Somehow I use my finger more than I should. But, um,. I just like doing that. It helps kind of control where the glue goes. Okay, there we go. And I used a lot of materials. So this is the mechanicals uh, from Finnevere. How nice is this? This is a it's called pocket watch and it comes in big and small. I'm gonna use the big one. Okay. How nice is this? Huh? So I love this piece and I have to glue it on. So this one goes with this one here. And the way I did it is I used one of the flares from Seven Dot Studio and I used it and I put it inside. This one has like a bunch of letters, but I like the circular part of it and it fits perfectly in here. And then I use these mechanicals. So these are really cool. And I use these to oops, kind of cover, it look, make it look like a phone almost. Like, I mean, this is the dial, the dial, the old dial uh, metal that we used to have on our old phones. Oops, so there. So this one, and I'm going to put it on top. Oops, no, I don't need that. I only need stuff for the for the edges. Oops, need to make sure that I'm focused on the side. So this is the vintage me trinkets mechanicals from Finnevere, and it fits perfectly here. I am just going to use a little bit of um, just to kind of mix the move the glue around. I don't want pieces of glue anywhere. So. So you see it just fits perfectly there. I'm just gonna show you. And you can see the little the little flare inside, which is really cool. And then what I did is I added to that one. I added, I used this stamp and add. It's this is called Angel Wings. And it's a Prima Ingvild Balm. And I just used the metal pieces, all three metal pieces for both of them. So let me just take them out. For this one, I used um, the propeller. Propeller. Let me put a bunch of it in to make sure that it sticks. And no, that's too much. Okay, there we go. There's the propeller. Good. Um, and the one other thing that I put in this one was. A light bulb this is the junkyard finding ceiling light bulbs and I'm gonna put one I'm gonna put this one second I'm getting it out and uh, this one over here again some glue and oopsie 
I need a little bit more glue because it needs to stay up. Sometimes this glue is nice because it also can add be used as um as cushioning for when things don't fit properly. So that's one of them, okay? And then the second one is this one here. I use this big bottle cap. Mm -hmm. One sec. This big bottle cap here. Okay, let me just put it like this. And then pieces from these um, mechanicals again. Uh, I used this spring looking thing, coil. So this one was hard to kind of glue, so I kind of just put some glue at the edges and hope for the best. I will push a little bit with the with the paintbrush. Okay, and then on top of it I'm gonna go put the, another flare but I'm almost thinking this is like too pale now let's see if we have we have some other flares I want to see what other ones we can find if there's any other ones that is no. looking to see what about this one uh, yeah why not okay so let's use this one there we go and then I used, I put, no, oh, hold on. I put this clock looking one on top. So it kind of defeats the purpose of that one, but that's okay. And then the heart from the stamp and add. So any metals will work. I mean, we're just, we're just uh, kind of building layers. Then I have this gear from the same one. So I tried to kind of stay with the same packages. Didn't want to like open all the packages. And um, just put the gear there. Uh, so what I did after that, oh, hold on. Yeah, it's a little clean. I just wanted to clean some other stuff here. Okay, there we go. So, the last thing I added was these little nuts and bolts. Oh, where are they? Missing them, missing them. Where are they? Oh, there they are. So, these are also junkyard findings from Ingvild Bombs from Prima. And I'm just going to use them Oops. on this thing. Oh. Sorry, just trying to get them out. Okay, there we go. So these are all the ones. These we don't need anymore. Okay, so again, I'm just going to put some here. These are like almost like look like the end of little bolts, which is really cute to just add as texture. And I want to, oops. And another one over here. Oh, hi, Gail. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome back. We haven't seen you in a while. And uh, this here. And then I'm going to put these other ones. These are like, look, really look like bolts. So uh, this one goes on top. Sorry that you can't see while I'm putting the little ones on. Now we're going to cover everything. I'm covering that hole that um, the bottle cap has so you can because you can use that also as a as a necklace. So I mean you can make a necklace out of it. That's what I meant to say. And oops, we can make we can put two more if we want if we really want to just because I have them and I want to use them. 
there we go and we have two more of these so let's just use those up also oops okay last little bit let's see where could i put it no i don't like it there maybe there and hmm, not sure where i want it okay doesn't matter okay i just want to show you the okay all righty so we're done gluing everything this is finished yay okay so let me wipe my hands a little bit they're very sticky um oh one thing one more thing i added was i just realized i did it before you know i can't put it back is that i had some of um these stickers these seven dot studio uh fortune teller stickers and i just realized i added this underneath so i'm gonna just gonna lift it for a second because i forgot that i had added this and um it just gives it even more texture underneath it i'll seal it with the gel in a second and i also added for the other one i used this um this one over here that looks like a how do you call this it looks like a hot air balloon so it fits the steampunk look very much so let me just kind of um seal this one first because i sometimes forget to do things and i end up um forgetting to seal them and the second one is this one. Oh, let me go back on this the second one is this which i will move this for and just basically seal it Maybe I'll use a paintbrush for it, just because I can't, um, I can't like get in between underneath here. Okay, so these stickers are really nice, and um, Seven Dot Studios always has the nicest, um, how do you call it, the nicest stickers and, and award stickers that you com that complement their collections. This one is the Fortune Teller. It was designed by Dee Dee, and. Um, we do have a surprise for you in uh, two weeks. Dee Dee will be here on the show. She's gonna make her own, do her own show. So I hope you guys will be excited about that. It's gonna be a really fun, she's gonna have a really good thing for you guys. Okay, so now that we're here on this stage, I just want to um, dry it a little bit. Um, this is will help when I'm going to add the paste on. This, this should help for that. And um, just a little bit. I mean, obviously it's not going to dry the whole thing, but it just will just help with when you're adding the different things that it doesn't move. Um, I did find that the paste was mixing okay with the gel when I was doing it because I didn't have patience for it to dry, so that was okay too. Okay. I'm going to start um, by um, painting on the wings and things. Those are already kind of dry anyway, so I can start. So I'm going to take the terracotta looking color. Probably has a name. I just don't know. Let's call it red. It's the rust effect, but in red. And I will um, use a paintbrush. Um, hold on. Just looking to see. Oh, no, this is a good paintbrush. Some of my paintbrushes are really dry because i forget them in there and i don't have patience to clean them right after so 
Um, just checking to make sure that. No, okay. Um, so I'm just basically painting it. No science to that. It's almost like for the wings. And what what I want to do is I want to mix the three rest paste one after the other and bring darks darkness and highlights to the to the different elements so that's basically what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing and I do want to leave some of the areas not white but like lighter than other areas so that's basically the main goal here um, you do don't forget the back sometimes we forget this because when I painted these I painted them separately so it was easier um, oops you see this is what happens when you start lifting things up but I will put that back on just want to get the back of this with these wings done so I might have to just I don't know if I'll have time to show you both just realize I always do very intense um, intense projects that that have too much on <laughs> and I shouldn't overextend my I mean I shouldn't like I want to show you guys so much and I think I should have just maybe made one box so then I have enough time to show you how to paint it how are we on time we're halfway okay so maybe maybe I'll have enough time let's see because um, it does take a long time to paint so so I want to kind of do more like of a dry brush when I'm when I'm going on the edges I don't want them um, too 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 uh, strong because I'm gonna be adding other stuff I'm gonna be adding other colors so I'm just kind of going I'll show you I'm going strong on the edges and then very light on the on the in the middle And here, I'm kind of almost light brushing it in the middle because I'm going to add the other colors too. And I want to cover the nice texture that I have. Let me hold it this way. So I could cover. The nice thing about this canvas is that it comes already with the script done, but you could easily just use like tissue paper, script tissue paper, or stamp script onto tissue paper and then glue it on. So, so there we go. It's already gave it a really nice rusty look, but of course we're going to add more to it there we go and now we're gonna do the other side the other one I meant to say um, did I paint the top here only painted half of it okay so I'm just um, painting basically. I can't really see um, what you guys are talking about. But somebody asking if the paint is grainy. Yeah, the paint um, it goes the darkest. The dark brown is the grainiest. The terracotta is in the middle, and the yellow is the least grainy out of all. So in that order, basically. If we're going by that, so then that yeah, oops. And wipes are my best friends because I all sometimes go over things that I don't want to. And I had to play a lot with this to kind of figure out the coloring and how I want it to look at the end. And even if I don't get a chance to do it all. I will show you the techniques that I use um, and which colors I use to create the texture and the coloring to make it oops, to make it look like it looks in the picture.
Let me just, oops, this is moving. Let me just get the back of that. So, I mean, it is boring to kind of um, just see the, you see the painting, but you know what? This is part of the texturing and the, um, the idea of how to use this rust paste. So bear with me. I think I've I used this one before. If you can, if you, if you remember the light bulb that I did a while back, um, that was done also with, with this rust paste. And um, yeah, I think I added too much. I'm putting too much because I want to cover as much as I can and I shouldn't. Because you slowly have to add layers to this. You shouldn't add it all at once. I'm just gonna do the back of the wings, okay? There we go. And then let's do the back of the other wing, or in the front too. So, um, mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the second color. Just we finished the back of the wing. I'm going to add the dark one first and then I'm going to add the light one at the end and I also you'll see some other things that I'm adding in between so I'm being lazy I'm not even changing I'm not washing my brush so what I like about the dark one I kind of it like kind of frames everything so the dark one which I already used uh, before to do the Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. Let me just get it a bit closer. So the dark one, what's good about it is that you can actually create like framing around the canvas, which is really nice. It brings everything together. And then you take the, the light color, the yellow color, and you bring some light onto it. So you see what I mean? Like you kind of frame things. And um, sorry, let me move this aside so I can actually work on the bottom. So all the colors go really well together. That's the point of, I think, how she she kind of designed them to go well. So you can, and they also add this really, if you can see how grainy this one is compared to the red one, the yellow one is, as I said, the least grainy out of all. And Finnevere design, designed it in a way that you can use all of them complementary of each other, which is really nice. If you haven't had a chance to kind of get your hands on one, on this product, I really recommend it. It's one of my favorite from this the last season. I'm gonna just now use this and just bring a little bit. And it's we see you as nice as I'm working on it, and because it's stuck together, even though it's bouncy because it's attached to the canvas, the wings stay stay uh, stay well like they they don't move okay okay here. I just want to make sure you're I'm in I'm focused all right just doing the last 
edges of the canvas and then I'm going to add the yellow and um, actually before I add the yellow I'm going to show you what else I did Oops, let me move this aside a little bit so you can see. So I'm um, just adding. And if I missed any places that I did, I forgot to kind of color in, at least I can use the other colors to kind of get them. Okay, oh, and here you see some places I've missed the color, so I just mix it with the other. Some pieces of the chipboard have been missed. Okay, so this is the fun part. Look at my hands, yay. Um, so what I did, I needed to add a little bit of, I wanted to kind of create kind of a patina to um, uh, on the on the steampunk project so I needed some kind of like turquoise or aqua kind of color so I used a soft teal color bloom and that helped a little bit in adding bringing some of the teal color uh, onto onto it and it's a quick way of doing it you could also use acrylic painting I added a little bit of acrylic paint at the end just to kind of bring everything together so as you can see um, oops. before I add the yellow I do want to add the patina okay so am I out of focus okay no, that's good So now I'm going to bring the yellow, and this is the. Um, it's just trying to focus here, and somehow out of focus. It looks to me out of focus. Okay, and this is the 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 color that brings everything to light, and I'm just going to mix it. It's the smoothest out of all. Um, I think I might have put too much there, and I want. To kind of bring everything um, to light, but only in certain areas. You don't want to apply it everywhere because then it will it defeats the purpose of what you're doing, right? So you're you're going to kind of add it in certain areas to kind of bring some of the stuff up to the light that's kind of like highlights but not everything try your best um, to kind of mix and I'm gonna go back again after you'll see I go back and forth with the with the colors because um, sometimes I get impatient and I tend to cover too much and then I have to go back and fix it with the other colors so so you'll see that I go back and forth between the colors a few times. But these colors, they mix so nicely together. It's really, really nice. So I'll show you at the top. Can you see? No, hold on. Constantly checking to make sure that I'm in view. There we go. I try to keep um, the inside of this intact as much as I could, um, but it doesn't always. Sometimes paint goes on top without me wanting to. And 
Oi. See, things are still wet. I mean, you can still work with them, which is nice, but things are are still a bit wet, so you have to be careful with some of them. And they will dry eventually, but Um, yeah, no, these go a long way. Somebody asking if these these uh, mediums go a long way. They do. I've had, I've I've used the only one I've replaced was the red one because I think I used it the most. Uh, but I've had the brown and yellow one for all the projects I've made with this over the past six months. I mean, I I, I use it for many different things, and. Uh, and they, yeah, and they last for a while. Just make sure you seal them well. Right? Then they, they, they do tend to dry if you don't if you don't close them if you don't close it properly. So <clears throat> so I'm just going to do the top a little bit. Alrighty. So, oh, they're very steampunk. On the picture, they look very steampunk. Um, I want to add a little bit more turquoise, and I'm actually going to go with um, some acrylic paint. I'm just using Amsterdam, but any turquoise acrylic paint would work. I'm going to use a, put a little bit more. I want a smaller brush. Hold on. Perfect. And oh, oh my gosh, that's not what I meant to do. It was clogged and now I have too much. Okay, well, I'm going to put it on here. Oh no, I hate wasting. But okay, it is what it is. Let's just. Um, okay, so just a little bit. I'm going to give it a few touch ups of turquoise. And then I'm gonna, you'll see, I'm gonna mix it with the, um, with the other paint. So when I use my finger, it kind of, because the rest of it is still wet, the rest, the paste that is in behind, especially the yellow one, it's mixing really nicely with the turquoise and gives it like a, a patina kind of look. So. There we go, and and just basically rubbing the turquoise with the other colors, it makes um, it gives it a really oxidized kind of look, and um, I just really like that color. I'm putting way more. See what happens is when you have you you spilled some turquoise on everything, and you have too much, you're gonna use too much. But maybe it's a happy accident because it's looking really nice. It's really looking oxidized, which is really cool. So I guess sometimes. Like as we say, happy accidents happen and we roll with it because I don't like wasting. I will come back with the terracotta a little bit more after. I really like that one. Oops. I think this one needs more gel, but I will put it after. That looks very cool. I like that. It looks very, very steampunkish. So let me go back to this one now. The nice thing is some of the things did kind of dry up, which is nice. So I can go ahead and um, rub things on and they won't fall asleep. These, especially these nuts and bolts, they kind of um, dried up. So oh, hi, Didi. 
As I said, Didi's Dee going to be joining us in two weeks. Are you guys excited for that? Mm. Oops. The cat is out of the bag, Didi, Dee Dee, and I told them that you're coming in two weeks. So even though I didn't mean to put so much turquoise on, I think it, I like it better actually. I know, so I'm excited about how it's turning out. Because it looks way more steampunkish than before. I think I think my hands should be part of the pictures I take. What do you guys think? Um, there we go. Okay, so hold on. Oh, this is cool. Okay, it looks really good on on the computer on the thing. Um, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of more red. As you see, I just keep on playing with it and mixing the colors together and uh, trying to. Oops, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm in focus. Does it? Is it my eyes or does it look out of focus? That's what I'm not sure. Let's just try to. There we go. Okay, there, much better. Um, so, I just realized I didn't put turquoise here at the bottom. So, whenever you're missing a color, then you can go ahead and mixing. This turquoise is missing here too. Oops. To tell you I love working with my fingers I'm not sure how healthy this is for somebody to have all these mediums on your fingers and I should put gloves on but I can't I really like the feeling of uh, of these mediums on my fingers it feels so good they make me feel like I'm doing something I don't know mm -hmm. I guess I overloaded with the or with the turquoise and it turned out really cool. So I'm just going with it and blending. Good. Oh, I just realized that some white areas here underneath. I should check. Sometimes I forget these white areas. Okay, so now just a little bit more red and maybe a little bit more yellow too we'll see because like you need to kind of play back and forth and add them in certain areas because they, they, they all kind of when you see a rusted element it doesn't always look the same it kind of looks different depending on on where where the water or water or oxygen rusted it so you do need to like kind of have different okay yeah cool oh I really like how they turned out um, I'm gonna use a little bit of the yellow now again so again just kind of mixing the yellow a little bit I just find that when you put the all of the colors and you keep on playing with them they turn out mixed they turn out so much nicer and since they're mixed it doesn't matter I know I'm going back and forth with my fingers inside the, even though they're super dirty but you know what it doesn't matter because they look so good when they're mixed that I don't mind now I'm really adding the last kind of highlights oh I actually can't believe I finished on time I'm almost done oh I, I do want to add one more last thing but um, 
I remember actually I also added a little bit of white, but I don't think this one needs the white. The other ones needed the white because I didn't put as much turquoise. So you can always, as I, you can always use white to kind of lighten things up if you need to. But um, let's see, just one a little bit here and okay Ooh, okay one sec i'm gonna close these and i'm gonna show you the last step so i'm not sure maybe i will add it so as you can see there is a little bit of white areas here and i could go in with a little bit of white gesso just to kind of lighten things up a little bit let's see i might use a paintbrush for it so I might run out a little bit late, that's all. Just a tiny bit. Okay, let's see, just a little bit. It kind of mixes with the colors because they're still wet. It kind of gives it a little bit oops, of, I'm, miss, ugh, I'm dirtying my white gesso, that I don't like. Let me put it here. <laughs> and go like this. I might have waited until um, until some of these areas were completely dry. I can't remember anymore. Oops. But just a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of give it a little bit of a whitewash. It just makes everything a little bit brighter. Um, okay. Oh, too bad I can't read the chat. It looks like you guys are talking about fun things. Something about food or something. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, no, that was not meant to be there. Yeah. I'm gonna put a little bit of red here. Okay, so that's basically it. I didn't want to add too much because then I start ruining things. Don't like that. Okay. So the last thing I did is I added. Hold on, I just want to paint this, I might have mixed it in. I added some um, microbeads, Prima microbeads. And I'll show you how I did that. Oh no, sorry, that's not the last thing. I still have to add the titles. So bear with me two more minutes, okay? So here is the gel. And all I do is I... Um, going to use the paintbrush not this one maybe the next one but it's this one is too dirty okay and I'm dipping my paintbrush in the gel and then inside the inside the um, the beads and just adding texture so I do end up with a little bit of micro beads inside inside the gel medium but it's okay it's all good it adds to the next to the texture next time around I'm going to add some to the wings can you guys see yeah okay to the other wings and it makes a difference so it looks really pretty and it adds more to the texture Okay, and let's go on to this side. Hold on. 
So I call these um, steampunk flying boxes or something. What did I call those? I can't remember what I call these. Um, winged boxes. Yeah, that's what it was. Winged boxes. I just thought it's cool. They're going to kind of take off, which is nice. Okay. I don't need to leave a lot of room for the titles, but I'll show you what I did. Okay. So that was for the I'll show you the the, the um I'll show you the, the texture from a, from a closer. Can you see if you can see the texture? Let's see. No. Oh, you can't really see it. But it's there. Believe it me or not. Uh, it's not focusing, so I can't show you. I'm trying to show you where the texture is. Well, you can see the texture, but not the beads. That's the only thing. So the last thing I did is I wanted to add some words to it. I used the uh, Seven Dot Studio Fortune Teller and just added some, just really, and I think like follow your heart um, or Gyps the sun will rise. I don't know. I'm just, how about dreamer? I think I'm going to use the word dreamer. Didi designed these really well, so I'm going to cut them up. I'm just going to use the word dreamer because um, I just find it's one word and it will fit. Let's see which one. This one will fit here, so I think I'll use it there. Oops. As you can see, I have no more fingers to use, so this one will go here. Um, it's hard to see because um, it's like kind of in the shadow. Let's use a paintbrush to kind of so that's the one word for this one dreamer and then for the second one um, choose to shine I think that's a nice one I'm choosing the as you can see I'm choosing the black ones because I found they matched better. And I just cut the words up. Okay. The other two say, I'll tell you what the other two say. This one says, trust in your heart. And this one says, radiate love. Oh, there's a lot of light there. They look different in that light. Okay, so I'm going to just cut this one up too. Where's my scissors? What did I, oh, there. I was like, what did I do with my scissors? Hold on. Okay, just cutting. And I need to kind of glue this. I need to glue these separate. Choose. Choose to shine. Okay, so let me just glue these now. And we can stay after the show, seeing some people like, I think, ugh, what's going on here? Um, something's wrong here. And okay, my hands are so filthy that I can't even stick these properly. I can't feel my, I can't feel the my my fingernail, not my fingernails, my my cuticles or no, not cuticles. Oh my god, I can't even see what I'm not feeling. Okay. That's good. The fingerprints, where, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna move it. I'm gonna have to glue these after properly because they're moving too much. Okay, so that's basically, um, 
it. So here is, I'll just try to get it from close on. I will take pictures of it. But this is basically my steampunk box. I think it looks different when I'm lifting it up. And as you can see, the sun is like shining right in my window here. So that is it. These are my lovely hands. And um, just going to turn you around, say the goodbyes, and stay over so you can stay and chat after. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, we appreciate you guys coming every week and joining us. Thank you. And see you next week again on Artist Live when Rika will be doing her project. Bye.